Hey guys, welcome back once again to Niagara Fire Corals. Today we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to take your questions from all of my videos and I'm going to answer them for you. I'm going to continue to do this moving forward. So you guys make sure you keep commenting and asking questions and uh, I'll be sure to put them up in a video and and answer them for you. Also, make sure if you guys like the content and you appreciate everything that's going on in these videos, to hit that like and subscribe button below because it really helps me moving forward in making new content for you guys and uh, doing these videos. I really enjoy doing them for you and we're going to continue to do them. So let's get into some of your questions and we'll answer them for you. All right, guys. So the first question I got here is from Glenn Velvet. And it's what size tank are you using this on and how much roll do you go through in a month? So this is referring to the Red Sea Reef Mat 1200 I have. So my total system volume is about four to 450 gallons. So I have the 270 behind me. In the room behind it, this, what you guys uh, would know as my sump room, I have the, the big 125 gallon sump as well as the two frag systems. So it's running a fair bit of water through it, but my rolls last me right now approximately four to five weeks. All right, so moving on to the next question. So the next question we have here comes in from Bryce Nelson. Great video once again. Thank you, Bryce. I really appreciate the feedback. Quick question. I got a Monipora Digitata two weeks ago, and since then the polyps have retracted and haven't come back out. I have some skeleton, I also have some skeleton die off. Any tips on keeping Monipora specifically? The other SPS that I have is a Stylophora. It's doing great, great polyp extension, showing new growth tips too. Anything is helpful. It's probably if all your now obviously i don't have your parameters here I, I can't see you know i'm assuming that your parameters are all in check that being said i would say it's 100 percent going to be placement uh monipora's digitatas if it, if it came from a system with lower light and you're you're absolutely smashing it with light then that would do it or vice versa i would start with it low in your system and then slowly move it up Either that or move it to an area of lower light. Or if you have it in an area of very low light, maybe start moving it to some higher light and see what happens with it. Monoporas uh, typically do not like the same kind of par or the same intensity of lighting as uh, your typical Acroporas and other SPS. Well, hopefully that helps and uh, good luck with that piece. I hope it comes back for you. Thanks, Bryce. All right, we'll move on to the next question here. Again, this is another question coming in from... Guys, I apologize if I am terribly pronouncing your names, but this looks like it's gonk reef keeping. Hopefully that's right. Can you notice any smell coming from the dirty side of the roll? So again, this is referring to the reef mat 1200. Uh, I personally don't really notice any smell coming from the dirty side of the roll. However, I do have mine. Uh, if you've already watched several of my videos, you'll know that I have all my equipment is in a, in a large room. It's, uh, it's in my sump room. So it's, it would be tough for me to tell. I don't smell it in there, but I certainly wouldn't be surprised if you had this in, say, a sump underneath of a stand in a kind of a more confined area that you certainly would have a bit of smell. But me personally, no, I don't notice any smell coming from the dirty side of my Reef Mat 1200. Thanks for the question. So our next question comes in from, it's actually not a question. Uh, I, I will throw these up on these videos as well. Because uh, I appreciate any feedback you guys give me. I make sure that I read every comment. I try to, at the very minimum, like them. I try to reply to them all. So, uh, this one here comes in from Martin Valancourt. And he's suggesting I make a video on the family of corals and the par I recommend. Acro, Acros, Monipora, etc. Sure, Martin, I will absolutely do that. Again, my recommendations aren't necessarily correct. But... I will give you uh, 
what I'm doing in my system. And uh, hopefully it'll help some of you guys. All right, moving on. We'll go to the next one. So the next one coming in from Mo Reefer. Great job. Thank you, Mo. I appreciate it. As I said earlier, I appreciate the feedback from you guys. Um, I, I really enjoy that you guys are enjoying these videos. It's, it takes a lot of effort to do them. Uh, the editing, the, the videoing, uh, everything that goes into making a video. It's a lot of effort, and uh, I appreciate your guys' feedback. Mo says, I would have just put wider optics off eBay, but a lot of people do this mod. Yep. I absolutely thought of that, Mo. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to suggest to you is make sure that you, when you're buying the optics, uh, I, I have some 120 degree optics already in my possession. They would not have worked. And I'll tell you why. The optics that are inside of the OR3 Orphic bars are uh, tall optic and the optic essentially touches that front acrylic that you see me peel off in that video. And once that was taken off, I mean, you simply bump that bar, those optics would fall off. And if you buy a shorter optic, say off of eBay, I'd be afraid that if you were to bump that, that bar, your optics would fall off unless you can get uh, and make sure that you get optics that are tall enough that they come right up to that acrylic front piece so they don't fall off. Either that or somehow try to glue or attach them to the to the actual diode inside. I tend not to try to do that because uh, in the past I have and I find that you haze, sometimes you can haze the, uh, the optic itself. So that's why I chose not to do it. I was going to use my own 120 degree optics that I already had. But uh, once I put them in there and the acrylic was back on, I just bumped the bar and a few of them fell off. So I was afraid that that's what would happen. And that's why I didn't do it. So if you're going to do that, Mo, please make sure that, you know, they give you the dimensions of the optic and they match up to the ones you're taking out. Otherwise, you could run into that same problem. All right, we'll move on to the next question. So this is another question coming in about the, uh, the or Orphic or three bars when I did the optic removal on them. And this is from Martin Valancourt again. Uh, he wanted to know how it ended up affecting the par. It substantially affected the par. I would say it probably knocked the par value coming off of those OR3 bars by 50%. It did uh, increase the spread drastically, which is what I was looking for. But if you're looking to do that and not lose uh, your par, par values, then uh, you might want to look into what Mo just asked in a question prior to this. But again, make sure you check those uh, those new optics or the new replacement optics you're getting that they'll fit in there properly and there won't be a space between to allow them to pop off. Thanks for your question, Martin. We'll move on to the next one here. All right, before we get into the next question, if you guys like this kind of content, uh, give me some feedback below in the comments if you want me to keep doing videos like this. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below. Hit that notification bell so you get notified when my next videos come out. And we'll continue to do this together. So we're going to move on to the next question here. This one comes in from Bryce Nelson. This is about the video I did on my power backup in case I have power outages at my house, what I have in place. And he wanted to know if I did all the electrical work myself and how long I've been in the uh, electrician field. I am not an electrician. I have a lot of experience with, uh, I, used to, I used to do a lot of renovating, building homes. I do have a lot of experience. So I did run all the electrical but I did not do the connections uh, in the, any of the panels or anything along those lines. I, I'm lucky enough I have an electrician that is in my family. He did that for me. I just did all the kind of the grunt work to get everything in place for the electrical work, but I did not do the actual connections themselves. I don't, uh, I don't like tinkering in, in, uh, your hydro panels. I don't suggest anybody do that unless they're licensed and they know what they're doing. So Nelson, uh, Bryce, that's a uh, great question. No, I'm not an electrician. No, I didn't do the hookups, but uh, 
it does work great. All right, we're going to move on to the next question here. So this question came in on uh, my alkalinity and salinity swing video part two. This is from the idea of clips. And he wants to know, or she, sorry, what do you think helps with Ghanis? I always have trouble. Uh, I don't know what your parameters are. I know that Ghanis were kind of everybody's nemesis going back several years ago. A lot of people had trouble keeping Ghanis back then. And I believe the reason for that was back then everybody was trying to keep ultra low nutrient systems. And Ghani simply will not survive in a system like that. They need some nutrient in the water all the time. So my system, I try to keep my uh, nitrates at approximately somewhere between 5 and 10. And I try to keep my PO4 or my phosphates at 0 0.05 to 0 0.08, even as high as 1. Uh, if you always keep those nutrients in check, you shouldn't have any trouble with Ghanis as long as you're keeping them in low to kind of a, a low moderate flow and you're keeping them in lower light. You don't want to absolutely smash Ghanis with light and you do not want to abs absolutely hammer them with flow. I have seen tanks where Ghanis are getting just crushed with flow and they're happy. I'm sure that took time for them to adjust to that, but... Usually the rule of thumb with Ghanis is, is you want to keep them in a lower light to a low, low to moderate flow. And uh, you want to make sure you have a, a decent amount of nutrients in your system to sustain them. Now I have also heard, I cannot confirm this, but I have heard from a friend of mine that uh, his, his Ghanis, they grow like, like grass. Uh, his his Ghanis are absolutely amazing. Uh, he swears by keeping elevated levels of manganese. Whether or not that is uh, is the key to his success, I don't know, but uh, you might want to try it. All right, we'll move on to the next one here. All right, so our next question is coming in from Mark Rogers. It's on my fragging corals video, and it is, what glue are you using? I try to always use the same glue. I've never had any issues with it. And it is the premium coral glue by Polyp Labs. You get these, uh, you can buy it in these containers here. Excellent glue. I have had no issues with it, but it can be tough to get sometimes. Uh, if it is out of stock everywhere that I look, I obviously settle for a different, different style of glue to get me through until I, I can get this glue again that's back in stock. So that is the glue, the premium coral glue by Polyp Labs. That's the, the glue I, my glue of choice. Thanks for the question, Mark. So last question we'll do for this video here today, I wanna keep it somewhat short, is uh, it's, it's, a, it's a question that came in from Sean Huber, and it's on the Radeon G6 XR30 Blue Upgrade video that I did. It's when I upgraded from T5s to my Radions on all my tanks. Uh, he says, cool tank. Thank you very much. How much percentage do you run the warm and cool white LEDs? I started out with them uh, at about 30%. I have found over time that, uh, that it was just a little too blue. So now I'm running them at 100%. Uh, I do have the XR30 blues, which are substantially bluer than if you were to get the pros. So if you do not want a really blue tank, you might want to look into getting pros if you're going to upgrade to the G6s. Uh, but for me, running the, the whites at 100% on the XR30 blues, it's, it's a really good uh, color blend. Uh, that's appealing to me may not be appealing to you, but I, I am running them at 100% and I am running my XR 30s on that system. There's three of them over top of it, along with the T5s and the OR3 bars by Orphic. I am running them at 35%. All right. So that's all the questions we have for right now, guys. Make sure, like I said earlier, when I put new content up, throw in your questions. 
Give me the feedback. Uh, I really appreciate all the feedback from everybody. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so you guys get uh, notified when I put up new content. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I'm going to continue to do videos like this. So keep giving me feedback. Keep throwing those questions up. And I'll be sure to do one of these videos maybe monthly, once every month, every two months. I will answer your questions on one of these videos. We'll see how this goes moving forward. Until the next one, guys, take care and happy reefing.